Yo, I think, I think I'm live. What's up, everybody? How's it going? Welcome to Fun Speculation. Yo, everybody, thanks for tuning in to Fun Speculation here on YouTube. Mav here, as always, and uh, gonna just have a shorter type discussion type stream, and I hope uh, you all enjoy this. If you do like the content here, uh, hit the like button, share and subscribe to the channel. I didn't stream this weekend. I actually got caught up. I was just playing NBA 2K yesterday with uh, with my brothers, Pong, Soul, and Steel Rain, and we got caught up, and I was playing that shit for like eight hours yesterday, I feel like, and I was, I was addicted today. I had... Uh, uh, I, w I went to uh, my mom had a birthday party. My first birthday party she had in a long time is pretty pretty crazy. Went bowling and stuff, so it was good to see her and in the family. Um, I just got back. I'm about to watch the Cowboys. I'm have I'm taping it right now, but you know I didn't make any content this weekend, and I've been thinking about this a lot because it's been coming up since the uh, Gotham Knights debate and uh, conversation. I had one tweet that absolutely blew up on there, and I. You know, I wasn't a hundred percent being serious, but at the same time, I uh, kind of feel like console gamers are getting the shaft. And I want to talk about that, and I want to talk about uh, game development and some of the conversation that's come out recently, and and backlash from game devs against gamers actually for criticizing criticizing game development or criticizing studios and that not being allowed. Uh, so we're gonna have a little bit of a conversation with this. Uh, Shout out to Rob C. What's up, 3-Bit? Jesse, Chunk Gaming. How's it going? Dakado, how are you? Um, again, another impromptu thing here. So uh, we're going to kind of go through, and I, I kind of want to discuss what uh, what happened to begin with, where we got to this point, the backlash that we've seen actually from game developers, and also uh, why uh, they maybe they feel like gamers aren't allowed to have a say or conversation with with gaming uh i think it's a really bad take but i'm going to get into some of those comments from some developers out there and uh we'll have some fun with this so yo what's up reggie lee how's it going so as as many of you know to some it's not a big deal right i get this i get it that not everybody cares about 60 frames right for me i strongly care about 60 frames because i'm i'm used to playing 60 frames games now ever since i got the series x and the ps5 uh, almost every game I play is 60 frames, and when I play a game that's not, I can really tell, and it really hampers my experience with the game, right? So, when we found out recently, and it was actually confirmed from the developers of Gotham Knights that uh, that game is only going to be playable via uh, 30 frames, 4K 30 with ray tracing, and that's the only optional mode. That's the only mode available for console gamers. Uh, it's it also is a current gen exclusive PS5 and Xbox Series X. Like, you know, that really sucks. And I, I was number one game for me this holiday after Starfield's delay was, was Gotham Knights. And it just absolutely baffled me how they could let that happen on a game that big has been in development for that long to make the decisions that were made along the development path to get that to where this is games only playable at 30 frames on a uh, current gen console. Again, they said it's not as simple as dropping the resolution. Us gamers don't know what we're talking about. They can't really just do that. Here we go. So I, the Reggie Lee says it right too. It's a standard, right? So there's been a lot of criticism, not just from me. There's been their discord as uh, it looked like scorched earth. I mean, it was just absolute people just absolutely upset there's pre-orders being canceled left and right for this game right now um gamers are audibly upset right now as well um but the gaming the dev community kind of rose up and spoke up against gamers with this because we don't know anything about game development and you know what you're right i don't know how to make a game all these other people don't know how to make a game, but we do know the kind of games that we want to play. And there's where the gamers have a say. And it goes into more than just, you know, hey, preference. For 30 frames versus 60 frames. It's not about that. Everybody has their preference. The key is options. Uh, Wondering Dutch says, can absolutely criticize them, especially when 
no devs try to claim to know about technical aspects of development. Uh, specifically, the character artist who has now deleted his account, who I know doesn't know anything about the technical aspect of development because he's an artist, right? There's a lot of game development. I do know this because I know game devs, and a lot of us in the community do know game developers, and we speak to them, and we kind of have some insight into a little bit of how some things work. A lot of it's contract work. Obviously, there's a lot of it's employees, and there's different aspects of game development. You have engineers, and you have producers, and you have character artists and you have level artists and you have uh animators and all these different things and not all aspects of game devs all know everything about 100 percent the way everything works across the board people a lot of times get hired because of what their expertise is or their specialty but you have a lot of devs that are experts just have a specialty in one category basically saying that gamers should shut the hell up and we don't know what the hell we're talking about we can't ask for better um, namely one from Blizzard who actually said that hot take, um, that unless you've made a game, you can't criticize one. Wow. Now imagine you actually took that into every aspect of life, right? So I don't know. We eat food all the time and criticize if it's good or not, right? Not all of us are chefs. Not all of us are even good at cooking, but we've eaten a lot of food, obviously, and we know what tastes good and we know what doesn't. You know why? Because we've had experiences across all different aspects of enjoying that stuff, whether it be food or what. Okay, let's say into cars. I've seen that people fight back with this uh, take. You know what? What if this car handles like shit or feels like shit driving or, you know, we can criticize it. Guess what? I've never designed a car before, right? Um, I don't even really know how to work on a car, right? <laughs> and Dutch says, unless you own a car, you can't comment on petrol prices. Yeah. Uh, shout out to Dutch. I love your new look, Dutch. ZZ Dutch, as I'm calling it. Uh, three, but who's a game developer? <laughs> Mind you, says, can't even imagine how it would have run on older consoles if they're struggling with 30 on next gen. Yeah, that's why they canceled the last gen games. Now, here, here's the thing, okay? For me, console gamers get to shaft a lot, right? And this has been a thing in the industry for a long time. Some people say it's it's expected, right? Some people say, oh, it's, this is commonplace. Or you choose to play on consoles, that's your choice. You just don't get the optimal experience of being able to have these options. That's really not the case this generation. A lot of games that we've played, almost all the big games have numerous modes now, whether it be a performance mode, a graphical uh, fidelity mode uh, there's sometimes like a uh, like a balanced mode you know there's one that's like 60 frames still 4k with less fidelity and there's sometimes these games even have like four or five different mode options on there so to think that gotham knights only has one option on console is ludicrous to me and that means that console gamers did not get the respect and priority of taking into account the necessity to have a mode option in there for performance for people that prefer playing games at 60 frames. If you pre if you prefer playing at fidelity 4K 30 with ray tracing, cool, right? Personally, I don't dig that anymore. I think ray tracing is overrated. I would never take ray tracing over frames. You can you can shove ray tracing up your ass if it means it costs me frames, right? Another thing, 4K, I used to be on the 4K train last generation but I didn't know any better. I'd never really experienced 60 frames. I, I thought that, you know, the crisper the image, the better for me. And that's what I thought until I started playing games like Assassin's Creed Valhalla and other games on current gen at 60 frames. I'm like, holy shit, this feels so different. Um, I never really knew that these games could feel like this. Far Cry is another example. It's like, wow, these games like just take on a new life at 60 frames. Old games that got FPS boost. Going back and playing those at 60 frames. Wow, they feel new again. They feel fresh. They feel way more playable. They're way more enjoyable than they ever did last gen. So I would rather play games at 1080p, 1440p, 60 frames than 4K. Personally, right? I would rather have a medium settings experience at 60 frames. If that's what it takes to get 60. So... Here's the thing. I see a lot of people that said that maybe the CPU is the bottleneck. Some people say that the Series S is the bottleneck, which doesn't make any damn sense, period. As many games across 
this generation now have different optional graphical modes on Series S as opposed to Series X. It's just different options, right? Series X can have different options in the series. Series X and S can both have different graphical uh, graphical options, right? A hundred percent. That Series S is not the same as a Series X, right? When they make different modes for those, like. In most Series S games, either got 1080p or 1440, 60. Some of them can't do 60. Some of them do 30, right? And you're buying you're buying a a, a lesser expensive console as that trade off, right? You, you that's what you're that's one of the trade offs there. The Series X is a beast. In fact, way better than the minimum spec of Gotham Knights on PC. The minimum spec of Gotham Knights for PC is like what my PC is. Okay, my PC. I got about a year or so before the Series X and PS5 came out, but it was like a lower to medium setting PC. I got it mainly for content creation, right? And it, I, I can play a lot of games at 60 frames and stuff, you know, um, 1080 and older games. I can do 4K and stuff like that, right? But uh, new games, uh, this game, even Gotham Knights on my 590, AMD 590 graphics card, my mid-level CPU, all this stuff, I can still get 1080p 60 on my C on my PC. My Series X blows my PC away. My PS5 blows my PC away. To think that there's not a way that the devs could have optimized and developed a separate mode, lowering the fidelity and resolution and things across the board to make sure you can do a 60 frames mode on PS5 and Series X is absolutely not accurate I, I i will not buy any argument from any game developer out there that they couldn't have made it happen and if they made the decisions along the way in the developing and the design process of that game that hamstrung the current generation of consoles to only be able to run at 30 frames then that is a huge mistake in the core development and design of that game period other developers have come out and said it was impossible to begin with for them as well for example, Dying Light 2. But yet, months later, we got a patch with multiple graphical modes and options with untethered co-op in an open-world environment. Lots of enemies. Now is available at 60 frames on these consoles. So how were they able to implement that after the fact and, and, and stuff? I, I get it's not as easy as just lowering the res and having a switch like that. You actually have to do the work of optimizing it for the experience at hand and trying to get the game to be for uh, 1080, 60, or 1440, 60 with whatever settings you can. Based on the minimum specs on PC and that option being 1080, 60, I would assume that potentially you could get uh, Series X and PS5 medium settings, 1080 or 1440, 60 without ray tracing. I would be much rather play Gotham Knights at that than 4K 30, personally. Now, it's not going to be for everybody. Understood. That's an option. The thing is that these game devs that are saying we're not allowed to criticize because we haven't made a game are basically, again, slapping in the face that they are entitled to uh, do whatever the hell they want and we can't say anything about it or have any kind of uh, reflection on the experience that we're being given or that we're asked to buy. Also, console players are charged $70 as opposed to $60, which is another slap in the face. So console players not only get the lesser experience, but they also are asked to pay $10 more. Again, same one of these game developers that's been out there, maybe the one that deleted their Twitter account, has actually said that, uh, you know what? Ga game devs, uh, people should be willing to pay what more for their games because the game devs deserve it. One of these devs actually said that, uh, that gamers should stop criticizing pricing or whatever. Wow. So, like, if I pay more for that game, does that dev that worked on one character or, or whatever get paid more? No. it's not how it works. They get paid by the publisher. The publisher pays the game dev studio, and they get paid by the, their development studio. Can potentially they make more money if a game costs more? Potentially. But they could also potentially make more money if their game sells more. 100% decision on pricing reflects on what the publisher thinks that they're going to get on return on investment based on the price that they put out there. You can sell a game for 30 bucks. Like remember ESPN NFL 2K5 made that gamble. They tried to make that in ESPN NFL 2K25, 20 bucks. And 
I think Madden at the time was still 50, maybe even 60. I don't remember what the price was at that. That was a gamble. You know what? Did where they say, hey, we're going to uh we're going to just like not pay our developers anything when they did that? No. This developers still got paid. Like it's just it just doesn't make any sense the arguments out there and some of the elitist attitude and I'm not trying to criticize any specific developers. It's more about the attitude of being beyond reproach from game devs and not allowing criticism about a product that consumers are asked to buy. Of course, it's up to us whether to buy it or not. That's ultimately how we're going to speak is with our wallet, which it sounds like a lot of people are doing. But it just doesn't make any damn sense. Like every other industry, and especially consumer focused, there's a lot of criticism at hand. A lot of people work overtime too. Game development is the only time now. I'm not saying that I I'm for crunch. This is not this is not. I'm not trying to be pro crunch here, right? I want to make that clear. But game development seems like one of the only industries where that title and that name is separated and used as a industry talking point uh and also from from game uh from gamers and game developers and everything alike when many people in different industries work overtime forced overtime in numerous in numerous in numerous industries and there's not a lot of talk about that shit right like okay so if you work retail around the holiday season are you working are you cr are you crunching I mean, you're forced to work like sometimes 60, 70, 80 hours a week, right? Is that, is that, why, why is there not backlash against that, right? Uh, managers at retail locations, uh, restaurants work 60, 70, 80 hours all the time. I work when it's busy with my job, even though I'm self employed, I still work 60, 70, 80 hours a week sometimes. And that's self choice. Right. That's because I make a choice. And a lot of developers also make that choice. And it's a lot of the development studios also vote on this kind of stuff. Right. I'm not saying I'm for forced overtime, but I'm saying why separate that category with game development when the rest of the world also deals with the same problem. The rest of the world deals with the same problem, but yet alone a separate word is used solely for the purpose of game development. To protect the devs, right? I get that. They should be protected from that, as is so should everybody else. So should everybody else that is forced into doing the same thing at every other job and position in, in the world that is forced to do such things. It's not just game developers that have to deal with this. It's up to Silent Cypher. Wow, hit us with a $20 super chat, dude. Appreciate you, man. How you, how you doing, Brian? Because upper management should reduce their salary and make sure the actual game devs see the rewards of their hard work. They are the folks that break their backs in the dev process. Upper management need to reduce the greed. And when we criticize game devs, right? When I criticize, when we criticize this stuff, what are we criticizing? Am I criticizing Jimmy, the level designer that designed level three of this game? Am I, am I criticizing... Uh, Sarah or whoever that designed the a character model in 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 this and did the art on this or the animation. No, we're not targeting solo game developers and certain aspects of things saying you suck at your job. That would be wrong. But we can criticize the decisions that were made that led up to what the consumer is being asked to buy. At the end of the day. Now, death threats, being cruel, all these things are not okay. But open criticism saying that something shouldn't shouldn't be this way, something is not okay here, that gamers don't want this, you kind of screwed up, studio, game studio, is completely okay. I deal with it with my regular job. I know many of you deal with criticism with your regular job. Oh my God, could you imagine people that work in the customer service industry and having to answer phones, constantly listening to backlash about every single place that they potentially uh, answer customer service for? It's constant criticism. Why is game development not allowed to be criticized unless you've made a game? That's such a bad take. 
A Justin Sane says, I worked 18 hours, 18 hour days in Iraq, 14 to 16 on construction. Things had to get done. It sucks, but I've always been part of a career, not job. 100%. I'm going to say this too. I work in industry and construction as well, right? Now, I'm more lucky than a lot of the guys that I work with because I don't have to do this. I work more in my office and it's more mental work, paperwork stuff. But I work in construction, okay? So guys wake up at like 5 in the morning or 4 in the morning. They drive and they go haul off stuff and wait in an hour to hour and a half line at a dump to get rid of a dump, to get rid of the trash in the dump. They then drive to the job site, work from about 7 a.m., sometimes till about 8 p.m. at night, and sometimes 100 degree heat, and then go home, pass out, and do it all over again six days a week. And they get criticized for the jobs that they do just as much as game does. Keys working 65 hours a week, but you do what you got to do. So I'm not specifically just talking about crunch here, but that is one thing that's like always like made me just kind of baffled. Like, why are we separating that with game development as the biggest problem out there? Like there's, there's, there's so many issues, right? I agree. Game devs should get paid more, right? Everybody should get paid more. That is not rich, right? If you're not wealthy, if you're not making in the top 10%, if you're, if you're working at a fast food restaurant, if you're working at a construction site, if you're working at re retail, if you're working answering phones, if you're working for an insurance company, if you're working all finance, financial industry, everything, guess what? Most people should be paid more. It's not just game devs that should be paid more. As part of the industry, it sucks. Sometimes it is what it is, it is what it is, but it's not just that that is the problem. Look at the publishers. Negotiate better deals. A lot of game devs are moving to indie studios, so they have more control over their projects and they have better results from the from whatever they sell. A lot of game devs have left this big studio culture to be able to do this. I don't blame them. Do we criticize everything else that is consumer related? If a movie comes out, for example, Halloween ends just came out. The movie was ass, right? I, I did not like it whatsoever. I understand if some people did. I personally didn't like it. I, I put out on Twitter that game was that. I mean, that movie was garbage, right? I, you don't hear people coming like, oh, you're not allowed to criticize the people that made this movie, right? You don't see that. You don't see. Oh, hey. This, this movie studio, they really worked hard on this. You're not allowed to say anything bad about it. Right? You're not allowed to say that they should have done a better job. That it was a bad movie. Why is it... Why is game... To, do, do I have to make a movie to be able to know if a movie's good? To have an opinion? I know that I don't like playing 30 frames games now because I do it all the time and I'm like, this sucks. I don't want to play it anymore and I move on and play something else, right? Or if I have the option in numerous games which have the options now, I try the different modes out. Sometimes I'll put it on the 4K 30 ray tracing or whatever just to see. Oh, how how is this? And then I, I don't like it. So I'm like, okay, 60 frames is where I like to be and I change the mode. To say that we don't deserve that, shitty. Dakota says, I work with truck drivers. I get bitched at every day. I do my job so it goes in one ear out the other. 100%. Um, anime says, I love Halloween Ends. I've seen it now three times in theater. Everyone is allowed to have an opinion whether it's good or bad. Yeah, just like it. everybody's allowed to have an opinion over if a game is good or bad. Why do game reviews exist? Why is, why are games reviewed if, if all of a sudden you're not allowed to... Criticize game devs. And we try to keep things mostly positive here, but like lately there's been a lot of negative stuff out there. You know what I mean? And um, if you're charging more to console gamers, I expect at least the same level of respect that the PC gamers get. Not less. 
It's time for that to change. And if they designed a game that's not possible, then that's a bad decision making from the get go in the design of that game. People say, well, let them create the art that they want to create. Okay, cool. But then the, how is that game still possible at 1080, 60 on a shitty PC? I, I get that the CPU is still on the minimum specs is strong. The Series X is better. There's no excuse. The only excuse is it wasn't a priority for them to implement those modes on console. And now it's too little too late. They didn't put in the work and it's not simple for them just to be able to add the mode in real quick. Should have done the work to begin with. Or they should have delayed it until it was ready. Because the simple thing of, hey, release the game and then we'll just make it a reasonable experience for everybody later is just getting old. I, it's not something I'm going to get behind. Now, bugs. Different story. Sometimes the ambition is out there. But even 60 frames is a standard. It's a standard. Anime says maybe a lot of these 30 frames games lately are because one console can't do what the other can and aren't allowed to showcase that. Maybe it's a parody thing. They got a battle against that if that's the case. <laughs> Steel says 30 frames to so get that smooth experience. Shane says Plague Tale embargo lifts in a few hours. Pump for Tuesday. Plague Tale was one that was rumored to be 30, but then it was also kind of proved not to be or something. Yo, Michael Garvey, welcome to the speculators, dude. Appreciate you joining the channel. Visually, Gotham Knights does not look anything special, so I really don't get it. What are they doing that's so special? Supposedly, it's the fidelity they add in this untethered co-op world that makes it hard for them to be able to do this mode on, on consoles. But I, I'm going to go and we're going to go and talk about uh, some of these comments. Again, I mentioned one here. Uh, that was shared to me today. Um, let's see. Oh, by the way, Plague Tale Requiem says 4K Ultra HD 60 frames. But not a lock 60. So not 30. So Plague Tale, hey, cool. They did it. Um, let's go. Let's see. What was this tweet from this developer that I saw today? Bum, 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 bum. Bear with me, everybody. There's so many. Man, it is crazy on Twitter the last couple of days. Where Where is this? I think he deleted it because I don't see it anymore. Is this the game dev that shut his Twitter account down? The Blizzard dev? Or was it the guy that always trashes on the Series S? I think the tweet's gone. Yeah, it's gone. That's gone. I think it's gone. Did he delete it? Chat, tell me. Did the Blizzard developer that says that gamers aren't allowed to criticize game development, is that is that gone? That guy, he closed his account? It, Xbox Ultimate DMs? Okay. There's just so much conversation. I don't see it anymore, Jasper. Oh, wait, here we go. I got it. I got it. However, he deleted his Twitter. Oh, wait, here we, here we go. It was from Frodosama Huggins at Osama... Dorius, lead content designer at Blizzard. And he said, hot take. Unless you've made a game, you shouldn't be allowed to criticize it. 
That's crazy. Absolutely crazy. Jasper says, yeah, he deleted his account. Well, you know what? Probably shouldn't be on Twitter if you're working for a company and you're being so anti-consumer in a, in a consumer-focused business. Crazy. All right, what about the uh, what about the other one? I, I actually wanted to read some of these actual responses to this. Uh, so shout out to ACG he said I haven't made a car. If the bricks fall off every forty miles, you can bet I will bitch. That is not any excuse for evil or just plain stupid comments. That the excuse for that is life. Right on. It's just so such a weird take. So this guy says, as a game coder, I disagree. Some of my favorite film critics have never made a movie. This is from Ian Fish. In fact, some of my favorite YouTubers are video game critics that have never made a game. How entitled do you have to be that says you're only allowed an opinion if you actually have worked in the industry? Are consumers not trained enough based to have certain expectations on experiences? People that have been playing games their whole life? I mean, like I'm sure, like all of you in the chat, I I've, I've been playing games since I can remember. My opinions on things have have changed over time, for sure. But to think that I can't have an opinion on it is just dumb and asinine. Uh, Dan Tran says, I mean, WB Montreal are inexperienced and they are being very ambitious with the storyline and the untethered feature. Are they unexperienced, though? I mean, they've made other games before. I mean, I get I mean, I guess you could say that, but like. The decision was dumb to, be, to begin with. Uh, three bit says W Montreal is a bunch of experienced devs on the team. I don't know. I I mean, what what else has WB Montreal made? All right, so they've made Arkham City Armored Edition on the Wii U. Something called Cartoon Universe, Lego Legends of Chima Online, Batman Arkham Origins. Yeah, I thought that was them. They made an Arkham game before. They made Arkham Origins. They have direct experience in, in the Arkham franchises. PlayStation 3, Wii U, and 360. They've been around for a while. They were founded in 2010s. They've been they've existed for 12 years now in game development. I don't know. I don't I don't see it. Origins wasn't really their game though. Yeah, it was. Yeah, Origins was like a one that people didn't like as much, but yeah, that was handed off to them. It, like our, the Arkham series is Rock Studies, but the Origins is the one that they made. Google says Gotham Knights getting bad press even before this thirty frames thing. The look and combat have been ridiculed. Yeah, hundred percent. I was still okay with it. Like I'm, I was willing to play the game because I thought it had a lot to offer with that stuff. But I know it's gonna feel bad for me at thirty. Shane says, thank God Xbox didn't overpay Gotham Knights for Gotham Knights on Game Pass. Jasper says, sometimes I like Ass Crossfire X, and sometimes I don't like Greatness, Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah, everybody has things. I, sometimes I like bad games, and sometimes I don't like good games. One thing, Jasper, is both those games are 60 frames. 100%. Um... A lot of the people have expectations because of the Arkham games, I think, that are hindering them from appreciating Gotham Knights. I appreciate the game design of Gotham Knights, like what the game looks like, the, what the premises of it. 
I, I don't have any issues with what kind of game they developed. The issue is, for me, is the fact that they didn't treat console players the same and aren't giving us the option to get 60 frames. It's as simple as that. It's as simple as treating the consumers properly. And if you made a game in this day and age now with on the Series X and PS5 only where that can't hit 60 frames, and that was a design flaw from the get-go. I'm going to wait. Now I was day one, hundred percent. I'm gonna wait now, and I'll buy it when it goes on sale. If it or if it gets an update. Just key says Black Friday sale, get it for thirty. Yeah, or one of those like crazy publisher sales, like a year later when games go on sale for like sixty percent off or something like that. It's just really no good excuse on this. I, I know that they tried to make some excuses. It's just not that simple or whatever, this or that and, and stuff. But like, I, I don't buy it. Like if they're running into bottlenecks, then they shouldn't have designed the game to hit those bottlenecks from the get go. People expect 60 now for the most part. There's a lot of people that do on this current generation. And if you're not being able to meet the standards of what gamers are to expect, especially on these machines and you're making design decisions, Laws from the get go. Uh, we now understand why they laugh less laugh, left left last gen behind because they can't uh, probably get it. Have, what what was the frame rate going to be on those? You know, it's gonna be like seven twenty p fifteen frames per second. <laughs> like it's not good. You know, like if you were to. But the, 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 then the other side of me looks at it, you know, 4K 30 with ray tracing is pretty impressive to hit on a big open world with co-op, right? So if you can hit that, why can't you hit 1080 or 1440 P60 without ray tracing and with lower fidelity settings? It doesn't make any damn sense. It's because they didn't prioritize giving the option to console players. I'll stand behind that 100%. And I don't like the takes out there from the devs saying one dev was out there that works for um geez, what studio did he work for? I don't know, but this guy was like anti Series S all, all the way. Like he has a history of just shitting on the Series S for years now, ever since the, it was announced. Uh, but then this was just like a character artist or something like that, right? Um saying that Series S is holding back gaming and everything like that. In response to this conversation. and But the bottleneck on this game is not that. It's the CPU. It's not the GPU. The CPU in the Series S is actually stronger than the PS5. So how is that? If the bot, if that's the bottleneck, how is that holding it back? It, it doesn't make any damn sense. There's no current gen console that is not capable of running that game potentially at 60 frames and if you weren't able to get it on a series s and you're only able to hit it at 30 frames fine but to not give it to to series x players because of that or let's say the ps5 can't hit it to not give it to series x players because of that that's bullshit too right i gotta call it out another dev i want to call out is hideki kamiya It's really hard to get behind Platinum games these days. They, like Pong, my buddy Pong Soul says they're a home run hitter. You know, they made Bayonetta games. They made, you know, uh, Astral Chain. They made Nier, Automata, and all that stuff, right? And they have made some great games. And then they do something like Babylon's Fall, right? Charge you $70 for a game. $70. Not enough people bought it. Not enough engagement. They shut it down. If you bought that game, you are not going to be allowed to play it. it come a year after release. You bought it digitally. Doesn't matter. Retailers are giving away the disc for free. How are you going to release a game and not stand behind it for more than a year? You know what? Mo and this is also on Square. That aspect. But how are you going to release something and not stand behind it? Do extra things. Put more work into it. Try and bring people back into the experience. Do better. Release more content. Figure out a way that figure out what's wrong with the experience and add to it. Abandon the project. Don't pull an EA. Don't pull an Anthem. 
then it gets worse for them because I don't know the insides and outs of how much voice actors are supposed to make, but this has not been a good look for Platinum Games with the release of Bayonetta 3 and it or Nintendo. I'm not sure who decides on the budgets and what to offer. Um, but to offer the game dev that, I'm not the game dev, but the voice actress that was the voice of Bayonetta for the first two games, $4,000 in an industry, which I'm guessing usually is a lot more. A three bit has even talked about in other industries, voice actors get a lot more and all that stuff. And you're talking about, you know, a heavily voiced character, you know, that has pretty uh, identifiable and then so you offer the, her that and then you go around and you give the job to Jennifer Hale which I'm sure may, maybe she got more money I don't know but it what was not a good look was was regardless of the ins and outs of that aspect I don't un, I don't know what happened so I don't want to give too much of an opinion just solely on that but the after effect Hideki Kamiya and his treatment towards fans of gaming and the fans of gaming franchises and period this goes back years with him saying in an English tweet that, hey, don't reply to me in English insects. Basically calling gamers and people that would like to ask questions uh, insects because they're not following his rules on his Twitter account. Uh, went on to uh, criticize and basically deny the allegations from the Bayonetta voice, Bayonetta voice actress. Um, and now... He has deleted his Twitter account, or it's gone. This is absolutely crazy. It is getting harder and harder to get behind Platinum Games. What they did was Scalebound originally, then you see Babylon's Fall, and then now this. What the hell is going on? Dan Tran says, I think Gotham Knights was on the brink of cancellation and the community support and hype got them through it. It's sad to see that this 30 frames per second news is upsetting so many people. It's a mistake. They made a big mistake. Uh, Relmex says, people broke the live support chat on PlayStation yesterday. I wonder why I still can't get a refund. PlayStation does not like to give refunds. But you should be able to get a refund for a game you have not bought yet. That is not released yet for sure uh live supremacy says why did not they just make it free to play since it's a service game i don't really think of gotham knights as a service game i think of gotham knights as like a story-based co-op rpg justin saying 76 was a flop the microsoft bought it cod was worst year yet microsoft boss it. babylon happens i think there's a pattern Babylon's was uh, a PlayStation exclusive. Fallout 76 was a uh, Bethesda game. But they bought more than just Fallout 76. They bought all of Zenimax and Bethesda. And Fallout 76 had already been released. And they've added a lot of content to that game. That game's actually fairly good now. Uh, it was a flop on launch and you know, uh, Bethesda and the other teams that developed that, uh, that was mainly, a uh, uh, Bethesda Austin, I believe game, which is not one of the A teams there. They've been adding a lot of content to that. So I don't really know what that has to do with anything. COD was the worst year yet. Yeah, Microsoft buys it. Yeah. But this year is going to be one of the best years ever for COD. So yeah, I think COD and this year is also going to be one of the best supported CODs as well because we're going to be getting two years of content yeah babylon's fall is definitely but there's more of a pattern what okay so we want to talk about 30 frames games which is really what i want to get into here and adding uh that feature later when game dev said that they couldn't do it right away watchdogs legion launched at only 30 frames with ray tracing it also was buggy as, as hell it had uh, save bugs that really broke the game for many people um, they lost a lot of progress hours and hours spent in that game that they lost um, later on added to 60 frames mode dying light 2 launched only with a 30 frames mode later guess what they released a 60 frames patch
going to be interesting to see what happens in this uh in this industry with these big games coming out because i think our tolerance for certain things have changed you know obviously tolerance for bugs has changed you saw what happened with cyberpunk you saw what happened with uh with battlefield right it's crazy as both of those had 60 frames on next gen consoles still um but still bugs bugs halo infinite has a content problem right now you know free to play game uh with the multiplayer but still content issue content problem big triple a game development has been kind of like really weird the last few years maybe it's because of covid i don't know but i'm just saying like if you're gonna put something out there and you're gonna ask that, that much money for it you at least have the standard At least have a standard of 60. Andre Doya says, when Microsoft gives you a massive, powerful, true next generation console like a Series X with 12.2 teraflops of computational power with an overhead of 13 teraflops, devs need to just focus on next gen. Yeah, I agree. Uh, and I think Microsoft, for the most part, is focused on next gen now, uh, or current gen, technically now, with... Uh, they're all their most of the games in the pipeline like forza was only announced for current gen supposedly starfield is current gen only um you have um redfall i believe is current gen only um all these different things you know and here's the thing i'm not i see a conversation in the chat right now saying hey hey uh you're not gonna boycott bayonetta 3 yeah it's fine nobody has to boycott anything i'm not one of those people that says you have to boycott something, right? Whether it be for whatever reason. Um, but what I don't, what I don't like is people say we're not allowed to criticize something. Dan says I think there's a big pressure on game studios to be innovative and ambitious and more large scaled, and they market it pre-development with just an idea and ambition, but appeasing gamers is a task. Well, you know what? Marketing. Here's the thing. In my industry. If you don't over, if you don't undersell and over deliver, you're in trouble. The same should be going to game development. You need to undersell and over deliver. You try and sell us 60 frames, like with videos and stuff. You're trying to oversell us on these like crazy graphics and, and showcasing things like we've never seen before. And you talk about how this is the biggest thing that's ever happened in gaming and things are never going to be the same after this game. And it's like, wow. You know, look, at, feast your eyeballs, everybody, on this shit. And then the game comes out as a buggy mess and barely runs on some consoles and stuff like that. Or they don't even have a 60 frames mode when a lot of the marketing has been 60 frames. That's just fucking wrong. Like, I, it, you should get criticized for that. And it's right for people to feel like they were misled. <laughs> Jasper, Madden every year. <laughs> And Madden's like, new motion flow physics 2.0. Gonna change the game. New defense schematic system 4.6. Gonna change the game. <laughs> uh, Key says they need to push back Suicide Squad and make it 60 frames or they're going to have the same issue all over again. One of... Oh, yeah, it was a Rocksteady dev developer. Thank you, Key. Right. It The guy that was... The same guy that was saying that game devs need to... Uh, gamers should be okay with paying more for games, so that way game devs make more. Is the same guy that also trashed all over the Series S, and it was a Rocksteady developer. And I actually commented on one of his tweets, and I was like, you know, dude, if this is your attitude towards consumers, maybe I'm not going to be picking up Suicide Squad day one. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not... My job as a consumer is not to support you. My job as a consumer is to pick what I want to play and enjoy it and buy it. And if I like it, I like it. If I don't, I don't. I'm not thinking about you when I buy a game. Do I want you to have a happy life and be successful? Yes. But the publisher is not setting the price specifically for your salary. 
the publisher is setting the price on the game based on what they think they're going to be able to make back in money based on the investment that they put out there. And if they feel like raising the price is going to bring in more money, then they will do that. If they feel like having the price lower will sell more copies, they will do that. There's not a finite amount of game copies to be sold. It's infinite. They can sell as many copies as they want, especially digitally. So if they sell more at a lower price, they're going to make more money. That's one argument. You can sell less at a higher price. You could also make more money. Who knows which one's going to win? But I will say that sometimes raising prices does cost you sales. Does that have potentially affect the game developer as well? Who knows? Because we don't... The consumer doesn't pay their salary. The publishers do. And depend on what they what they make on the game. Publishers pay the devs, the dev studios. They have contracts for this stuff, everything. It's not my extra $10 that I'm paying is not going into Mr. Animator's pocket. Right? So when they go and say that we should, we should pay what they're worth, that's bullshit. I should pay what I feel like it's worth. If it ain't worth it for me, I'm not going to buy it. If I think $70 is too much for that, I'm I'm not going to get it. If I have to pay $70 to, because I have to get that game, then guess what? They got me. Right? They got me on that. You know what I mean? That game developer's worth is not up to me. It's up to the game development studio that hires them and how much the cut is that they that they get of whatever piece of pie there is for them to share. It's not a consumer's job to protect that industry. I'm just looking at a guy looking to play a game. And if you don't meet my expectations then I can criticize it. And so can anybody else. Because we have an opinion. And a lot of us are experienced with games, right? Like our, our opinions are, are, are completely valid. Outbreak says, what, what do I think of the Silent Hill announcement on October 19th? I'm interested to see what that's going to be, Dave. Yeah, I don't, I don't know 100% what that's going to be. Young Hebrew said, worth is subjective? Absolutely. Have I bought $70 games? Yes, because I would rather buy and pay the extra money than not play the game, right? It was worth it to me. Do I feel like they should be? No. But it was still obviously they got me, so they, they you know what I mean? Like, they charged what I'm willing to pay. You know what I mean? That's why they're doing it. Now, it's up to the publishers again to determine that price. A lot of publishers moved on to 70 because they know that we're willing to pay it. So that's just what it is. Um, Jesse says I rarely get bonuses the price is to get their money back devs have already been paid whether you buy it or not they rarely get bonuses yet it's, it's up to like again like Elden Ring 60 bucks sold a shit ton of copies Are I'm sure they're doing fine right because it was a good game You know what I mean? Like, it was a good game. So, like, is it... Would it have sold as many copies if it was 70? I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. It might have had some people's a apprehension more, but once they got out there, how how good it was, I'm sure it was still sold. So they could have they made more money if they sold it for 70? Maybe, but guess what? They didn't need to. It's still a massive success. It was $60, right? Like, it, it doesn't... It's, the Mr. Blah 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 didn't make more less money because that game was 60. Andre says, third-party developers need to work more with Microsoft to understand the amazing console and PC technology. Also confirmed the dev said Plague Tale Requiem is hitting 60 frames on series consoles and PS5. Yeah, so that would turn out to be a bunch of baloney, that one. Um, about that game running at 30. 
Uh, we had a conversation about that on Xbox Ultimate two weeks ago when that rumor was going around. And then we got, did get the confirmation about Gotham Knights, and that's where a lot of this spawned from. Here's the thing. Consumers have a right to speak up when they feel like they're not being treated respect, respected or if they feel like something isn't for them or they feel like there's mistakes made or they feel like something isn't up to the quality that they want. And just because we don't have the expertise in making a game doesn't make our opinion any less valid. That's just point blank. What it is. So I appreciate everybody's opinions here and everybody's thoughts. Um, tuning into this little conversational stream. Uh, maybe some people won't like this, right? Because, you know, I'm kind of speaking unhinged on some of this stuff. But some of those comments from the developers kind of attacking gamers for having opinions is just ridiculous. Could really good fidelity and... 4K resolution compensate for lower frame rate ever. Maybe if you have a really slow moving game where the frames are less impactful, potentially, right? Like ultra slow. If I, I instantly, I instantly have a, uh, if I boot up a 30 frames game, I'm like, oh, this feels like ass. 100%. And guess what? In the games that have the options of the fidelity modes and the performance modes, I think the game looks better at 60. Because the image is crisper and moves moves more fluid. So the whole experience for me is better because the game's at 60. It only it also improves the visuals for me because of the more uh more clear image with movement, but it also improves the feeling of the game for me. It makes the game feel better to play. And ultimately, what are we doing? We're playing these games. Right? So Justin saying RTS, maybe? Even at RTS, Halo Wars 2 is a different game at 60 than it is at 30. It feels way better. But, yeah, it's just my, my take. Some people may prefer 30, and that's completely okay. And the fact, and, and it's it's not criticizing the fact that they have a 30 frames mode. Lots of games do that, right? They let the let the artists have a field day, do what they want, make the most visual appealing game that they possibly can, if that's what you're going for. But give the option, because PC players have the option. Console players don't. Not on this game. And that ain't cool. Yeah, it's all a matter of preference. I just want the options. Options. If somebody prefers to play at 4K 30 ray tracing, more power to you. Love, love it. Great. That's the way you like to play your games? Awesome. That's great. If I like to play my games at 1440 or 1080 60 in the lower fidelity settings because I feel like it's a better experience for me, the fact that the game devs aren't giving those players the option is bullshit. For me, performance looks better. I agree, young hero. Performance looks better and plays better. The ray tracing, couldn't care less about that shit. My reflections looking a little bit better. That's cool. Whatever. I would rather the game play better and feel better, but it's just my opinion. Uh, I usually go for. I, I always go for performance mode. That now that it's an option. Last generation, we didn't have those options. We only started getting it sometimes on the One X and PS4 Pro, but it's still rarely. Before that, we never had the options. This is just 30 frames, and occasionally a game like Call of Duty would be 60. Halo. And it's like, wow, I didn't even, I didn't, I didn't even associate. That's why the games felt better. I didn't even realize that's why the games felt felt good, because I, I just it wasn't enough of a topic point at the time for me to even comprehend that. It was just, oh, it was a good game. But then now that every game is 60 almost, and then when I go and play at 30, I'm like, oh, that's why this felt so bad. I understand it now because it's generation, right? 
But anyway, everybody's going to have their own opinion on it. I just want to be able to criticize devs without devs shitting on gamers, right? Uh, not individuals. Not criticizing on specific animators for the way their animation looks or the artists for their poor artwork or whatever. I'm not, that's not what this is about. This is about the decisions and the management, making the decisions for the gamers and for the products that we're supposed to be uh, wanting to purchase, right? And not at the snuff for me, the 30 frames. So it's what it is. Andrew, you, if you're one of the people that can't tell the difference between 30 or 120, that's cool, man. You know, uh, there's some people that can't tell the difference. Uh, honestly, there is. There, there's some people that really can't tell the difference. I can majorly tell the difference between 30 and 60. I've never even experienced 120 before. So I can't tell you what 20 feels like, but I, for me, 60 is like and on another level. Right? The games just feel completely different. So, you know, I think going between those modes, a lot of times you can tell, you know, and if you're just used to playing 30 frames and that's all you ever play, then you're not really going to notice a difference. But for me, I'm used to always playing 60 now. And so when I play 30, it's like jarring. It's jarring. It's like, ugh. So, anyway. Hey, Chris Jones, appreciate you hopping in. Um, Yeah, it's more of a it's a feeling when you're playing the game, Andrew, for me. And like the image, how smooth it is, it's just it's just different, man. Um, I don't know what you're playing on mostly, you know, but like if you play like a lot of games default now are 60 and you may not even know it. But when you when you play a game back at 30, like for me, I can instantly tell I can instantly tell without knowing it's it's 30. I'm like, oh, is this running at 30 frames? It feels like ass. And I go and look. Yeah, it is. The first person games at 30 gets you sick. That's why I've avoided them for years. Yeah, right on. Well, everybody, hey, again, I appreciate you tuning in for the stream. Uh, and hey, if you like this content, remember hit the like button. I uh, share, uh, share the channel out, subscribe, hit the notification bell to tell when we go live. Tomorrow night, we do have a show at 10 p.m. Eastern time. Fun speculation podcast. Uh, we'll have a little bit of this conversation, but hopefully there's some cool news tomorrow on Mondays, right? And we can uh, have some fun conversating about whatever the hell that is. Um, still some awesome games coming out this holiday season. I, I think overall Gotham Knights, I'm still excited about the game. But I'm not excited about playing it at 30 frames. I'm going to wait. And hopefully we get a patch. Or I'm not going to pay 70 for it. I'll pay I'll pay less later. Right? So that's where I'm at on that game. But um, went from my number one to my number none right now. It kind of sucks. I was disappointed. But uh, yeah, everybody, appreciate you. Have a good one. Take it easy and see you later. Peace out.